delivery, breach. Um, the only, there are several different presentations of breach that you may see. You can see an arm, you can see both arms, I guess. You can see a butt, you may see a shoulder, you may see one leg. The only breach that you can deliver, if you have to, is both legs. If you do not have both legs out, it's not going to happen for your hospital. Go to the hospital, drive as fast as you safely can get there. Let them know what you have so that they're ready when you get there, okay? But if you have two feet, you may not, you may make it to the hospital, you may not. Um, a couple of things that you really want to think about with this one. As the baby progresses, all right, so as they're progressing, um, normally as soon as their chest comes out, that pressure that was keeping the chest compressed releases. And then they fill up, they take a breath, and they inflate their lungs, and they take a breath. Well, their chest is going to come out, but their head is still going to be in the birth canal. So what's going to happen is, uh, what's going to happen is they're going to try to take a breath, but their face is covered like this with the, the walls of the birth canal. So we've got to make sure that we're going to allow that. We'll show you that for just a second. The other thing, their head, still trapped in here, their body, kind of heavy, no neck control, it's going to dangle. And then we could put undue pressure on the neck, and you could occlude the airway. You could call the internal distraction injury to the spinal cord. So we want to make sure that we are supporting this body as it comes out. All right. Um, additionally, as it comes out, it's going to be going backwards. The smallest part's coming out first, so it's going to be more difficult to get those shoulders and those that head out because typically, as the head comes through. They get the little cone head thing where those, those bones, the front nails, allow for the shifting of the bones to make it kind of point. If you've ever seen a newborn baby, their heads are pointing when they first come out. We don't have that action happening here. Everything's going backwards. All right? So we're supporting, supporting the legs, encouraging mama. You know, you're doing a good job. We'll get some more good pushes. Okay. Make sure everything's trying to kind of stay up straight. Now, another thing to think about with this is those, those arms. Normally, if you come in shoulder first, right, no problem, but with this, they could be up like this, all right? So if those shoulders are up like this, um, that could cause problems. If they're coming out like this, it could make it harder to get the shoulders out, and you could actually end up with like a dislocated collarbone or, or shoulder or something like that, all right? But we're supporting the baby. It's going to be slow to go normal. Okay. All right, supporting that butt, supporting the leg as it comes out. Waiting here. Patient care. A couple more good pushes. I can see the belly button. You did a good job, Mom. Good job. Thank you. Okay. We're supporting. We're supporting here. You know, they may be moving. They may not be moving a whole lot. It just depends. The more they move, the, the better, I guess, for the baby, but the harder it is to, to maintain that. See on this one, you see, oh, 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 come out. see how those arms are coming out all kind of weird? That's going to make it a lot harder to come out. But as it comes out, you're going to have to help them out. See, I don't know if you can see it. We've got one arm still up in there and one arm out, which is a fairly correction realistic for the things that may happen. Okay, so we're going to have to support. Now, right now, this mouth is still covered. So we're going to take, support the baby, two fingers, and we are going to insert by their face and lift up the vaginal wall, the birth canal. I don't know if you can see it, but lift it up off of their face so they can breathe while we deliver the head. Okay? So we're going to help. All right, one more good push. All right, we're going to help. And there we go. And now we've got the baby out. All right? So, more questions? You're not going to necessarily be pulling on the baby, but you may have to actually assist with those arms and shoulders a little bit. And you're definitely going to have to put your hand in like this over the birth canal to keep that wall up off of their face so they can breathe. Any questions? No? Should? It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there. Um, if we do have a a seizure, if we go planted, okay, if we have a seizure. First line of defense, what's our drug of choice there? Mag. Mag. All right, mag takes a little while to get in there, right? But hopefully it'll start working pretty quickly. We'll get that drip set up. We'll give them four grams over about 15, 20 minutes, right? IV. That's why you want to have an IV established just in case. Um, if the mag does not work, and if we are still seizing, as long as we are seizing, typically that pregnancy is not going to, 
or not coming, but the delivery's not going to progress. What she sees is she can't push him, right? So we've got to get that seizure stopped. If the mag does not work, you may have to go back to a traditional seizure medication, which would be your Valium, your Versed, your Valium, well, one of those, um, Adamant, one of those. Be aware that as long as this is connected, this umbilical cord, anything you give mama, most likely is going to affect baby. All right. As far as I know, all the benzos will cross the placental barrier and, and, and affect the baby as well, which means when baby comes out, there's a greater chance that they will have some respiratory depression and a lower APGAR score. So you're going to have to be prepared to deal with that as well. But if mama doesn't stop seizing, baby's going to die. So we have to stop that seizure. First line, mag. Second line will be our traditional seizure medications. All right. So any other one you want to talk about? We did nuchal, we did breach, we talked about a few of the seizures. Um, Um, but with, with that belly, you could feel 
it was hard as a rock. Like it was like like hard, hard on her belly. And um, so we, we transport her after transport, and they did an emergency C-section, but it, it did not work. Um, if you suspect any kind of trauma, especially with the abdominal area, and they are visibly pregnant, consider a uterine rupture as a source of, of shock as well. One other thing. So if you are doing a, um, a cardiac arrest, if you're working a code on a pregnant female, you need one extra person. Here's what you do. So we know we don't lay anybody who is in the last trimester um, flat on their back, right? Because we're going to have that satanic hypertensive syndrome where the baby will actually compress the vena cava down here. So we roll on their side, right? So you can't do that when you're doing compressions. So what you do is you have somebody, you actually do it from the other side, but I can't get over there, so I'm going to show you from this side. You would have somebody, their entire job, the entire code is to find the fundus and pull the fundus like this. All right? So they are just literally manually displacing the fundus and the uterus off of that vena cava to improve venous return during that cardiac arrest. That's their whole game. All right? That's uh, one of the part of the new recommendations that AHA actually put out when they last updated, I think it was like 19 they put out an update in it, but you just manual displacement of the uterus during compressions of a visibly pregnant or first trimester pregnancy with a code. Hey, yeah, what happens if they start to deliver while they're doing compressions? Oh, God. Um, I mean, I guess you would continue compressions and, and have somebody catch the baby and do, I mean, that's just one of those. You know, you, you got to keep compressions going because if mama's not getting adequate circulation, then the baby sure isn't. And you gotta, you gotta give them both the best chance that you can. So I, I would say have somebody continue compressions, even if you don't have to. Even if you have to sacrifice for me, you have to sacrifice ventilations and just come up with those every now and then and do keep good compressions and have somebody catch it. You got to be prepared to catch baby and still keep those compressions going to try to circulate what oxygenation is there. I want to mention on that too, uh, and we'll get into it more um, whenever. Uh, can you see me? No. Um, we can. We'll get into it a little bit more whenever we get into uh, MS two forty seven. But um, the the abnormal deliveries, especially and uh, maternal um, issues, um, OD issues, where you're talking about, you know fetal demise versus maternal survivability or things like that, you know, are, are situations that you definitely never want to find yourself in, but they're ethical issues. There's a lot of ethical issues that come up, and we'll have several ethical conversations, you know, on that, you know, such as what do you do? Do you try to save the mother? Do you, you know, what, what would the mother do in that case? And, you know, of course, there's always so many different um, routes you can take, but ultimately, you got to remember that that the mother is the the means for that infant to survive, right? For the fetus to survive, and if if the mother if you, if you, if, the, if if you have maternal demise, that's almost on a guarantee certain fetal demise, you know. Um, and so that's just some of the stuff that we will talk about in the future as well. Eric, do you have a question? Oh, I just see like a hand come up. No, it's like a, a, a function where you can use the hand raising thing. Um, so, uh, oh, did she? Okay. All right, cool. All right, you got anything else on that? That's it, unless they have any questions. All right, uh, give me uh, just a few minutes, and we're going to set up uh, the pediatric um, thing here. Um, I know this is getting fairly long but we got it we got to show for it so um give me a few minutes we'll set up the pediatric assessment so